So we're going to do a, a great stir fry today. And one of the great things about doing stir fries is you you can kind of do it how you like it. I'm making it the way I like it today with the vegetables that I like. But that's one of the cool things about cooking is that you can take somebody else's recipe, switch it up a little bit, change a couple of vegetables, and it'll be your perfect stir fry. So uh, as you can see, I just bought some nice, beautiful chicken tenderloins right there at Ingles. Everything on this table that I have here, except for that pan, is from Ingles. So I just went and bought everything on this table, nice and easy. And we're gonna do everything in this beautiful little wok right here. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna put it on low, and I'm gonna add just a little bit of sesame oil. Right, about, right about a tablespoon. We're gonna let it sit right there. Give it a swirl a little bit, let it heat up. And while we're gonna sit here and slow simmer this chicken, Chef Lou is gonna uh, chop up a little bit of ginger. I'm gonna show peppers. you how to process some ginger, right? Absolutely, and give you a couple of hints on what to do with the leftovers, right? right, right. And uh, we'll, we'll cut up a few of these vegetables. Everything will be cooked right here in this pan and we'll just add to it as we go, all right? So let's get started. I'm gonna leave this chicken whole for now. We'll cut it up after. I'm gonna put it in the oil and just kind of swirl it around right in the middle. All right. Chef, is there a reason why you keep your chicken whole? I just like it. It, it, it tends to keep the juices in. Uh, once it, it sits there and cooks and simmers, keeps the juices in, and we'll let it sit a little bit later and then cut it. Sorry. But if, you, if you're pressed for time or cooking for one, you can definitely cut it yourself in the beginning. That's it. Make it that much quicker. All right. So next, I'm going to take a zucchini. I'm going to cut the ends off my zucchini, save those for later in a stock or what have you, make it nice and manageable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all the edges off. I'm not going to use the seeds. I'm just going to use the, the outside edge where all the nutrition is, right? And how come you don't use those seeds? I don't use them because it's it's harder to deal with. It makes a mess in my pan, and then all our nutrition is on the outside, so it just makes a much better product. So I'll actually cut those out a little bit, but I'm not going to get too fancy. And then cut them nice and thin. For me, I love vegetables, so cut them thick like that. It's going to let it stay nice and firm. Uh, if you like your vegetables soft, just cook it longer. That's the beauty of doing stir fries. You can kind of make it how you like it. Go ahead and chop them up. We're gonna do all our vegetables and then throw them all in at the same time, okay? Would you like me to chop an onion, Chef? Yes, that would be great. All right, fantastic. So I like, Chef, I am going to uh, cut the onion and process it just about the same way. I'm gonna cut the top, the bottom off, and then I'm gonna cut it in half to give myself a flat space so that onion doesn't roll around and I don't cut my fingers. Um, have That's you ever done that? That's a great idea. Yes, I think uh, I have some pictures of that actually. Maybe we'll share later or not. Or not. Or not. It's one thing about uh, playing with sharp objects. At some point, you're going to forget and slip and have a little mess on your hands. But. That's beautiful. She's much faster than I am. Look at that. All right, so now we got that. We need a couple of peppers. Chef, you want me to show you how I, uh, how I uh, slice your Juliana pepper with no waste? Yes. Okay. I would love that. Everybody watch. I'm going to show you how to Juliana pepper with no waste, okay? But I'm going to have to put my microphone down, so I'll try to talk real loud, all right? All right.
that's about all the chopping we have. We're gonna, we already got our um, our garlic done. I'm your personal food processor, right? I'm not used to that. So that's nice, isn't it? I'm not really sure how to act right yeah. now, but it's nice. So while that's cooking, what I like to do, get a little squirt bottle, because I eat a lot of stir fries. Um, most of the children you see running around are all mine. I have seven, so uh, we do a lot of cooking at my house. I'll make my little stir fry sauce in a squirt bottle and just keep it in a refrigerator. So I got about an ounce of water in there. I'm from Louisiana, so I use crystal hot sauce. Yes, it's the, in my opinion, is the best. Like I said, it's the best stir fry. So, and I'm gonna put about a about an ounce or so in there. All right. Now, most of the time you don't put sesame oil in your stir fry that's going in at the end, but I really like the way sesame oil tastes. So I'm gonna add some to that too. It, uh, it just, it plays on your tongue with all those vegetables. It's just really good. Uh, I also like to put a little mirin, which is normally used in teriyaki, uh, but I've been known to have a sweet tooth. So this is uh, pretty much sweetened rice vinegar, right? So. So put about a tablespoon of that in there. And then I, uh, not, I'm sure you guys don't know this because you don't know me, but I was chased up here because of Hurricane Katrina. So these last few weeks have been a little emotional for me there, watching Texas and Florida get hit there. Uh, so lots of garlic. I put a lot of garlic in everything. Every good Cajun has a lot of garlic. My grandmother would be super upset if I didn't have garlic in everything I cooked. Uh, here's some of that good uh, soy sauce. And we're gonna put about three ounces of soy sauce in there. Red pepper flakes and that'll do us. And red pepper flakes, obviously, you don't wanna put too many unless you like, you know, really hot. About a teaspoon. And the cool part with this is, the longer it sits in the fridge, the better it's gonna get. So shake it up, and before you use it every time, shake it up because there's oil in there. So there we go, you can hear that chicken. Look how pretty that is. How about ginger, Chef? Are we gonna put some of this fresh ginger? We're gonna put that in in just a second. There we go. All right, add a little bit more oil. And then we're going to start adding all of our beautiful vegetables and ginger and all the rest. So, I'm going to put a little bit of garlic in there. There we go. You want to throw about a tablespoon or so in whenever you get a second. I'm sorry if I was already done. So, Chef has me um, processing his uh, fresh ginger. And uh, ginger usually comes with just like this in a nice little ball. I usually buy just the, the amount that I need, but uh, Chef, we were discussing it today. What happens if you buy too much ginger and you have too much on hand? So our thought was if you take and you peel all your ginger just with a regular peeler, and then you can process it through a robo -coo or, you know, even maybe even a, a blender. Right, a blender or a stick mixer just to chop just it up. Just to chop it all up. Add a little bit of oil in it and then keep it packed in oil and keep it packed in your freezer. Um, you know, a lot of times if you don't use it all and you uh, leave it in your refrigerator, it will just dry out. It dries out. And just, it, it's just not a good funky. product. Um, uh, another lady I just talked to a little bit ago said she kept hers in her freezer and then it molded. So I say peel it, process it, pack it in oil, and you'll have it for a long time. But uh, I'm going to show you how uh, I process most mine just right over a, a simple microplane. I love these. Yes. Chocolate. Uh, you mm. might like chocolate, garlic, and now ginger. One's good, whatever. It's a. Uh... Uh, it's making me hungry just smelling that. Can y'all smell this? This is much better than watching it on TV, right? You can smell it and then that's perfect. That is great. Oh my goodness. All right. We're going to get that rolling. And we're going to take our vegetables. I'm going to put some of our squash and zucchini around the outside. Our carrots are already done for us, so we're just going to put a handful in there. I'm actually going to cut them up a little smaller just to help speed us up. And that's 
the neat thing about those carrots, they're already processed, peeled, and ready to go. You can't find that anywhere else any better than our English produce. Absolutely. And they actually have, uh, I've seen it some of the, the other Ingles where they have little packs of, of stir fry vegetables already done. There you go. Isn't that yes. nice? Yes. They had shiitake mushrooms and everything in there. And that, that is, that is, for people like me that are always on the run, that is great. So we're going to add some of this here now on the side. Red onions, red bell peppers. That ginger smells amazing. Chef, I like how you keep everything on the side there. Is there a reason why you do that? Oh, yeah. Look. The, so these woks transfer the heat very good, and I don't want my vegetables to burn. I like I don't like them raw, but I like them kind of crunchy. So keeping them on the outside is going to keep your proteins in the middle, keep that cooking, and then have all your vegetables cooking on the outside, and it transfers the heat pretty good. And we'll mix it all in just a minute. Um, and you'll see I have some of these mung bean sprouts. We're going to leave those till the very, very end. Yes, I think that's what takes this with the ginger, sesame seeds, mung bean sprouts all together. Ah, it's like a symphony on your tongue. So we're going to let this cook for just a minute. I'm going to crank the heat up a little bit again. What we're going to do is we're going to let all these flavors stick to the bottom of the pan a little bit. We got some sesame oil, we got garlic, we got ginger, we got the chicken and the vegetables. We're going to let that cook a little bit and I'm going to basically deglaze the pan with our stir fry sauce, and you're gonna smell the results as soon as I do it. It, uh, it is sure to be a hit, I promise you. And again, if there's anything in here that you don't like, the beauty of a stir fry is, leave it out and replace it with something else. I mean, you, we could've used broccoli, you name it. Uh, uh, go to your farmer's market and buy a bunch of vegetables you don't know what it is, and throw it in a stir fry, and I guarantee you'll like it. <laughs> so, I uh, used to do a class on, you ever see a CSA? where you join a farm and you pay by the month and you get a box of vegetables and most people don't know what those vegetables are when they get them. So I would teach a class and it always seemed like I was doing stir fries with that. I wonder if that's enough. We got a lot of people here. You do got a lot of people. Let's do that. There we go. All right. Crank that heat up. There we go. Could you add, could you add um, you know, some noodles to this and almost make it into a lo mein? Absolutely. I almost did that, as a matter of fact. Uh, you notice I don't have any rice, right? Uh, so I was trying to figure out how we were going to do that with all these people here, and I never did figure it out, so we didn't. But uh, even egg noodles, you know, if, you're, if you have children, it's always hard to find things for them to eat. Spaghetti. 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 Egg noodles. I mean, uh, every, every teenager. Ramen noodles, right? <laughs> so they will tear it up. All right, you can smell it kind of starting to get a little, a little burn to it there. So here we go. I should have looked at that earlier. All right, so we're gonna put about three ounces of our sauce in there right now. And then we're gonna see what it looks like. One of the cool things, I like doing these shows because you can show people that when you're cooking, you know, yes, you have to follow a recipe, but the reason why I got into cooking is because I can take somebody else's recipe and change it and make it the way I like it. You know, we all have to eat. We have to eat, breathe, and drink, right? So uh, why not have fun when we're doing it? Make it ours. That looks great. Oh, that smells really good. So you can see how, how saucy that is in there. And all those flavors are incorporating together and they're gonna to cook together. We're gonna to make sure that our chicken is done for sure. So when do you add the mung beans to it? Just right at the very end? I do mine, it's, there's a couple different philosophies on that. I add mine cold at the end and just right on top. So this is a garnish. It's a garnish with the sesame seeds for me. Nice. So, but you, you know, if you, some people don't like raw vegetables, and so if you wanted to add them to it at the end, I just wouldn't do it in the beginning. I'd wait till the end, let it cook maybe a minute or two. Could you make this, you make this dish using brown chicken or pork? Yes, you can do beef, you can do shrimp, you can do pork, you can pretty much do, do anything, any protein you like. And uh, tofu is another one. 
Uh, a lot of people frown when they hear tofu, but some people have to have tofu, right? So uh, this exact recipe, you just change out the tofu for the chicken, and the tofu is gonna take on the flavor of the sesame oil and all the other flavors in the pan, and it is actually very good. Um, I, I used to be the chef at the Duke Diet and Fitness Center and had never messed with tofu, ever, because I didn't need to, I guess, I don't know. Uh, and then once I started messing around with that and tempeh, I actually like it. So, you know, it, uh, it's a change, it's something different. If, you, if you're gonna practice a meatless Monday, uh, tofu is a great option for that. You still get, yeah, a lot of schools. Uh, Never heard of Meatless Monday. Have you all heard of Meatless Monday? Yeah. They, uh, a lot of schools and colleges now are doing Meatless Mondays, so it's all tempeh, uh, all that, all that. It's really. You want me to cut your chicken for you? Yeah. I want to make sure it's all done. We need to give it another minute just to be safe. So. Does anybody have any questions while we're up here about what we're doing with this stir fry? Good. We uh. And you notice I didn't put any salt in here, right? And add any, any salt and add any pepper and add anything else that's right here. But wait till you taste it. Uh, my grandmother, rest her soul. Uh, I used to work on Bourbon Street, and I would come up from work and cook her a meal. And the first thing she did every time was grab a bottle of salt and just pour it out. It, used to, it used to killed me every time she did it. <laughs> so now I don't cook with salt anymore. Well, uh, well Chef, while that's finished and cooking, I'm going to hand the microphone ooh. over to um, the lovely Jason Odell. And he is going to do some background trivia on you, okay Chef? Okay. All right folks, I've just got a question for you. See how well y'all pay attention. What brought Sheriff to this? What brought Chef there to North Carolina? Gentleman in the gray shirt in the background. That is correct. There we go. That's beautiful, guy. That's Thank you, ma'am. Uh, got some That's veggies nice. stuck on there. Perfect timing to have a little snack. There we go. So you saw when I put about. I put at least three ounces of that sauce in there, and it's all pretty much cooking out, and that's exactly how you like it. You wanna, you wanna let that, those vegetables soak up all that, that flavor is basically what it is. And those sugars in that mirror, they sure do make a nice sauce, don't they? Ooh, yes. It reduces down and almost caramelizes, and you know, you don't have to add any kind of cornstarch or any thickener to it, do you? Not at all. I like making it easy. Oh my goodness, that looks incredible. All right. Perfect. And one thing I didn't mention, water chestnuts. I'll throw those back in at the end. I just get those right out of the can. I don't like the, I like crunchy stuff obviously. I think it's coming out, I like crunchy. So I get the ones that are big and basically just hard chopped. Leave them like that. We'll mix this up. Perfect. Look how pretty that is. And then I'm gonna just for for beauty's sake, I'm gonna put a little mung bean sprouts there. Some sesame seeds on the top. And that is a wrap. So pretty. Beautiful. All right, so how's that look? Y'all ready to have a little try there? All right, thank y'all very much. Well, as they say down in Louisiana, allons manger. Lizzie. What did they say? Allons manger.